Hey guys, Mike Bills, welcome back. I have another 40 volt battery in this box for us to review. So let's get this thing open. We're gonna do the unboxing on the floor because unfortunately all my other tables are full of projects and other videos that I'm shooting. So if any of this looks interesting to you guys, make sure y'all subscribe so y'all can see more. And this battery is from a company called Temgo. I've seen one other guy on YouTube using the Temgo battery, so I wanted to try one out. <clears throat> All right, so here's a good preview of the battery itself. This orange color looks amazing. I just want to say that. Right here, we have a little port. So I wonder what that's for. Other than that, it looks like a standard golf cart style battery, kind of like the DC house one that we already reviewed. Let's see what's in the small box. Looks like they gave us a ratchet strap and that's going to be to secure it in the golf cart. That's pretty cool. And we also get this little display. So this little display is actually going to plug into that little plug on the side of the battery. That's awesome. And then you can just mount this wherever you want and we're gonna be able to monitor the battery real time. The battery also has Bluetooth as well. You also get some little screws to mount the screen, or random screws, the actual battery M8 terminal screws. In this box, you get a nice charger and it's rated at 18 amps and it'll charge to 56.8 volts. Very interesting because normally you can go up to 58.4, but this is only gonna charge at 56.8. It's really awesome that this thing comes with a nice charger, a nice screen, all the accessories, even raster straps. That's really cool. I love the orange or white color scheme too. This thing looks really awesome. So what we have here is the Timgo 48 volt, 100 amp hour, lithium iron phosphate battery. This is a 16S battery. It has a 200 amp BMS. It is mainly advertised and designed for golf carts, but a lot of people, including myself, are gonna be using these on 48 volt off-grid solar power systems. And right now, this whole combo that you see on the table with the charger and everything is selling on Amazon for 750 bucks. So it's a pretty good value. It's about in line with the rest of the 48 volt golf cart batteries that you find, including the DC house, which is another battery that we reviewed that's kind of in the same package. However, this has some features that the DC house battery didn't have, and I'll show you that. So if you guys look right here, we have a little port and we take our little display right here, plug it right in. And now we have an awesome battery status meter and it tells you all the same things that the Vetra battery tells you. You get individual cell voltages right here, just kind of some information about temperature and cycles and all that. And your main page right here. It literally looks exactly the same as the one on the Vatra battery, and this thing's awesome as well. The BMS is also equipped with Bluetooth, so we're gonna go ahead and test that out real quick. So I'm gonna download the Timgo app on the App Store. Hopefully you don't need a login to use it. And there we go, no login needed. It gives you your basic battery capacity. If you scroll up, pulls this little menu up, gives you a bunch of information there as well. Gives you a lot of temperature readings, and it also gives you individual cell voltages. And that's really it, not a whole lot to see on that, but it does give you a lot of basic information that you really wanna know about your battery. So it's pretty cool the fact that you can use Bluetooth and you can use the included screen to monitor this. It makes it very easy to see what's going on with this battery. So in this video, we're going to capacity test the battery. Then we're going to go install it in my golf cart, try it, make sure it's actually good enough for golf cart use, make sure it doesn't cut out or nothing crazy. Then we're going to actually open this thing up and take a look at the cells and the BMS. And we're going to judge together the build quality of this battery and see what you're getting for 750 bucks. The market is really flooded right now with 40 volt batteries. And I've seen some pretty bad ones, but I think we're going to have a good one on our hands. As far as the weight, this thing weighs hundred pounds. So if you're going to be moving this around by yourself, just be careful. It's very heavy. It does have the carrying handles on the side so that's nice so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fully recharged so we can start our capacity test so here's the setup we're going to use to test the timgo battery i have the timgo battery charger right here fully charging the battery as we speak it's nice because it comes with a pigtail that you can permanently install on your golf cart or your system or whatever to make connecting the charger very easy so that's nice that it has that we have a current shunt right here and i also have the screen hooked up so once the battery is fully charged i also have it connected to the sun gold 5000 watt 120 volt inverter and this is what we're going to use to apply a load to the battery we're gonna put a 20 amp load on the DC side. So we're gonna be pulling 20 amps from the battery. That's a 0.2 C load. And we're gonna run the test to see how many amp hours we get out of the battery. And it's gonna show up on our little shunt here. I'll be able to show you guys once the test is complete. Really like the charger, that's really cool. So I have that zeroed out to 100. We're still topping off, but it's almost about to hit. And this is already showing 100%, putting in six amps. And there we go, guys. The battery's at fully charged, 58.4 volts. All the cells are about 3.65 volts. So that's fully charged. And on the app, if we look, there's only a 0.042 cell voltage difference. Now do keep in mind the battery is brand new, so it might balance out better than that over time, but everything looks good. There we go, we got our 0.2C load on the battery, reading 21 amps, 21 amps on that meter, 21 amps on the Bluetooth BMS. So we're gonna let this test run all the way through until the system shuts down, and we're gonna see how many amp hours we get. I'm hoping I can draw this battery down to about 42 to 44 volts. Now keep in mind with lithium iron phosphate, you can go all the way down to 2.5 volts per cell, which in this case would be 40 volts. So if we're running a 20 amp load on the DC side, the battery will last about five hours. 
That's our capacity test on our Temgo battery just finished up. As you can see, we're at 0%, 0%, and we actually got 104.78 amp hours. So this thing passed, pulled almost 105 amp hours. And we probably could have kept going with the test, but my inverter actually reached its low voltage cutoff. The battery actually didn't shut down just yet. So I would assume we could get probably close to 105 amp hours if you really, really wanted to push this thing. So that's awesome. This thing did a good job on the test. Now I'm gonna fully recharge it so we can go install it in the golf cart and go do some testing on that. All right, guys, I got the Temgo golf cart battery out here sitting on our EasyGo RXV. This is an RXV golf cart, so it has an AC motor. Currently, I already have the golf cart converted over to lithium. But as you guys can see, we use four individual batteries. So there's a lot more wiring involved. It's a little bit more messy. You have to put an equalizer. And honestly, it's not ideal. So this Temgo battery is really gonna clean up all the wiring and it's gonna make everything look a lot better. Plus it's gonna be nice that we're gonna have the added little display because right now I have to use this separate little shunt in order to keep track of the state of charge. And that's just one extra thing you have to buy if you're gonna convert your golf cart versus having this thing on there. You just slap it wherever you wanna mount it, plug it into the battery and you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this old stuff removed and then try to get this thing mounted in there. I'm gonna try and use the included straps that it comes with. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking everything off. And just look how much extra space and wiring that we are saving by going to one battery. It's gonna look way cleaner. All right, probably right about there, right in the middle of the tray. It seems to be very well supported. Oh yeah, that's good, that's good enough. I'm not gonna really crank on it because I don't wanna put a lot of pressure on the case itself, but it's cranked on there enough and I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So that's actually pretty cool, it worked really well. All right, so the wiring is pretty simple. It's gonna vary depending on what kind of golf cart you have. But my valve cart, pretty much one connection for your negative and then our main positive. And make sure your connections are secure. And that's it, this thing's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the seat back on and we can start doing some testing. Oh yeah, real quick, we are gonna hook the screen up. I'm just gonna plug that guy in. I'm just gonna run the wire with some screws to mount the screen. All right, let's test this thing. Make sure it actually moves. Oh yeah, bye boys. All right, we got the battery recharged at 100%. So we're gonna go do some full throttle pulls and some hill climbs just to make sure the VMS doesn't shut off. And we're also gonna make sure the golf cart can go at top speed. All right, we're going to do another full throttle acceleration, so foot to the floor. And as you guys saw, we got about 180 amps and the battery did not cut off. All right, the golf cart's running phenomenal. This battery is doing an amazing job. Hasn't cut out or done nothing weird. It's still secured in there. I think if I was gonna make this more permanent, which I may end up at this point, is I'm gonna put a little bit more foam around it just to keep it better in spot. But so far it's been good. And just a few miles that we've driven it, probably two miles, we've only used 3%, so that's not bad. Even got my little lights on. I noticed too, at full throttle cruising, we're using anywhere between about 30 to 50 amps. And if you're using 50 amps, which is on the higher side, this would get about two hours of runtime, and that's continuous. So that'd be about 40 miles of range. But from personal experience, these golf carts really don't use a whole lot of power, so you could easily put around on this thing probably all day if you're not full throttle and going crazy with it. All right, we just got back, and it looks like this thing only used about 6% of the battery. I would say too earlier when I said that you could only get about two hours of runtime, that's at 50 amps. But when I was cruising after that, the amperage draw was anywhere between 25 to 30 and it showed it would run for almost four hours. So that's pretty good. So far, the Timgo battery has performed amazing. Everything about this thing has been really good. So now we're gonna open it up and see exactly what's inside of it. Take a look and make sure the build quality is also good. Cause if the build quality of this battery is good, I think we have a winner on our hands as far as a battery that I could recommend. And I think people would get a lot of good use out of and have good luck with. All right. Oh, this thing looks pretty nice. Here's a first good look with the cover off. Looks pretty good. Look at that beefy bus bar that connects, looks like two banks. 
It looks like there's two separate banks. So there's eight cells here, there's eight cells here, and they're using this very large bus bar to connect the two banks. So that's really nice. And it bolts to a terminal that is then laser welded. So if you look in there, we have laser welded terminals. It's kind of hard to see, but all the bus bars to connect the cells in series are on the outside. So there, and then there on the other side. And they cross in the middle, and then your main positive is right there. Your main negative is right there. Looks like we have two six gauge wires going from our main negative to the BMS. There's the info on the BMS. Looks like a pretty nice unit. We have a Bluetooth module right here, so that's going to give us our Bluetooth. And then we have one bank of balancing wires here, one bank here. It's all nicely sheathed, so there's no loose wires kind of just hanging around this thing. And then this is the wire that comes off for our communication to our little display. And what's interesting is it's only two wires. So it's a CAN wire probably set up. And that just goes right here. That's where they put the little port at. And they put a bunch of goo right there to keep that secured. There is foam in there between the battery cells and the outside of the case. And then there's some big pieces of foam that are glued in on either side. Very nice. I did try to pull the whole assembly out. But if you guys look on the bottom, there's some foam down there. And it looks like that double-sided sticky foam. So I think they stuck that in the bottom, stuck the battery on that, and then glued two big pieces of foam on the side. And that's what's kind of securing the whole pack together. So I'm not gonna be able to pull it out, unfortunately, but I'd say the build quality looks pretty good. I'd be very confident in using this in the long term. Positive wires are also two six gauge wires. All that looks really good. It's got this insulation wrapping on it to protect it from chafing and heat and all that good stuff. Terminals look nice as well. They put the goop on there after they torqued them to make sure everything stays nice and tight and it also insulates them so they can't short out underneath this. You get some foam blocks here that's gonna prevent the lid from crushing the BMS. The BMS just appears to be held on with double-sided tape, but it's not loose, it's very secure. The pack itself looks like it's getting compression from reinforced tape, which we do see that design a lot. And as long as it's compressed good enough when they tape it up, they seem to hold up pretty good. You got a big old fiberglass board here, as well as on all your terminals. Right there, right there, and right there. And that kind of helps insulate everything and keep everything good to go. Let me know what you guys think of the build quality, if it's worth it for the price tag of this battery. I think it looks pretty good. It looks really clean, everything's nicely laid out. Wire management's really good. So they did a really good job on all that. Well guys, let me know what you guys think about the Timgo. I was impressed with it and it worked really well and it passed all the testing that we did. I do like the fact that you can buy this with a combo and it comes with a little screen for 750 bucks. I wish you could buy the batteries by themselves, which I think you can. I just couldn't find the listing on Amazon for just the battery. But if you're a beginner and you need a battery, a charger and a display, I think it's a really good way to get that. For this price point, can't really go wrong in my opinion to get five kilowatt hours at 48 volts if you're using it for a golf cart or an off-grid solar setup. More than likely, this is gonna go into my off-grid solar power setup, but who knows? If I need it for the golf cart, it's very easy to install, make two connections, put the ratchet strap on and you're literally ready to go. So that's pretty cool. That's gonna be it guys. Let me know what you guys think about the battery. If you guys are using this at home, let me know the luck you guys have had with it. I'm gonna continue to test the battery, put it in service and use it as much as I can. And if I do have any issues with this battery, I will report back with those in a different video and, and keep you guys updated on the progress and how the battery is holding up. If you made it to the end of the video, thank y'all so much for watching. I will put a link in the description if you guys want to go check this out for yourselves. And that's it. Thank y'all so much for watching. And here's where my Temgo battery is going to live just for the foreseeable future. It looks really good next to the DC house battery. It's literally exactly the same, but I really love the orange color. I'm digging that a lot. Orange just happens to be my favorite color. And this thing looks absolutely killer right here. So we are gonna be putting some cycles on this thing and actually using it.